Hello everyone, my name is Ratkovic Milovan and welcome to this bootcamp. Um, here we are going to talk about many different things in chess. I find all these topics very important, crucial and um, in modern chess these days you have to be player who, who knows everything. You cannot like uh, know only one aspect of the game, only tactics. Because what? I mean, in other parts of the game, you will be weak and you will not be able to gain your rating to progress in chess. So it's very important to know each aspect of the game and to work on each aspect of the game. Um, that's why we, we, we chose 15 most important um, parts of, of play and uh, in each of them you will find very useful tips, very very interesting positions and uh, I am sure that if you are careful you will learn a lot and after these 15 days you will become a stronger player. Um, yeah, let's talk about training program in general. Uh, so besides this boot camp I mean, you have to work by your own, uh, at home, of course, um, so it is good to have schedule. So, for example, on each day, like, you can you can have your own schedule. You can say that, for example, on Mondays, I, I do tactics for one hour, so I will solve tactical puzzles. Okay. That's 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 good. On Tuesdays, I will do some strategy. I will analyze game of strong ground monsters, and I will try to find the right plan in their games. And nowadays, it's it's really easy to find puzzles, to find different positions, useful tips on online, and I mean it's not difficult to 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 find them. Um, so, for example, then on Wednesday I I can do I can play some some games. So very important thing in chess. Many people simply overlook that, but um, there are two parts of of training in chess. The first part is to work on chess. I mean to do to do different things, to read books, to practice to practice your openings. To, um, to do some strategy, some end games. But the second part is, is to play, to play a lot. If you want to become a strong chess player, you need to play. You need to play tournaments, you need to play training games at home, in chess club, online, why not? And, and that's definitely something you have to do. I know some people who were working on chess their whole life but they simply didn't become strong players because they didn't have enough games they didn't play so much and simply they they they, they were stuck you know also you have to work on chess on the other hand i know many people many older people who just have been playing their whole life they didn't work on chess at all and just they make the same mistake over and over so I know one guy, he makes the same mistake in the third move for the last 30 years, you know, so just don't be that guy. So uh, you have to play chess a lot, but at the same time you need to work on chess. Okay, uh, also, yeah, I said, for example, on Wednesday you can play some games. Um, on Thursday you can do some end games. Also, there are many, many useful books for that um, you can you can find them you can download them from the internet you can buy them i mean just it's it's very uh, uh, easy um, to find a good book good end game book there are many of them uh, okay then so end games are very important because you will learn some basic things some things that you have to know i know many people who just don't pay attention on end games that is wrong approach just uh, also some younger players. I know some very strong younger player, young players who, who, who play incredibly, who are very, very strong. Their tactics is, is, is unbelievable. But when, when pieces are, are exchanged, when pieces are off the board, queen, queens especially, 
when queens are off the board, they simply cannot play endgames. They don't know how to play endgames. That's, that's the key of success, endgames. So please pay attention on endgames. Here in this um, course, in this bootcamp, we, we chose four most important topics here. Pawn endings, rook endings, knight endings, and bishop endings. And you will see we will do some patterns there, some most important um topics and i hope that you can you will you will um, learn something new from there okay so thursday uh and games uh then on friday you can again play some games and again as i said if you cannot find a partner if you cannot find opponent you can just play online i mean and also pay attention don't don't play bullets so much i mean bullet is 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 funny you know you can have fun but uh, it's much better to play blitz on five minutes or to play games on 10 or 15 minutes so uh, rapid chess rapid chess is good because it's not so um slow but at the same time it's not so quick so there is like um it's it's normal it's normal time control and you can learn a lot you, at the same time it's not so slow so you will you will have fun too also if you have time if you have will if you have um, patience you can just play classical games online even online it's it's possible of course um then on saturday and sunday you can do different things if you have more time again you can do some tactics you can you can see some positions and most important we didn't talk about that before you can do some openings opening preparation also important um <clears throat> also many people make a mistake they just they they're trying to remember variations okay remember variations remember variations and of course later they forget so yes you have to remember some variations but you need to uh, when, when you do that, you need first to, to put pieces on the board. Don't don't uh, do openings. Don't practice openings on on um, on computer. It's much better to have normal chess board, and then to 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 try to move the pieces uh, on the board. It's much easier, and at the same time, you will remember more because um, you simulate um, normal game of chess. Um, yeah, also what I, I started to, to, to say, uh, just many people make a mistake, they, they're just trying to remember just many different variations without thinking about them. So you have to know why you played some move. Why you played, I don't know, knight g3 in, in, in Neidorf. Why is that? I mean, you have to know the reason. If you don't know the reason, you will easily forget that. So remember that, that's very important in each opening to know why you played something. Um, also, I mean, that's also a common mistake. It, uh, opening isn't enough. You also need to know early middle game after that opening. How to do that? You can analyze uh, different games on that topic, but the best way to do that is to analyze Grandmaster games on that topic. Don't analyze some some games that that um, like lower rated players played. You know, just it's good to analyze Grandmaster games. So you play, for example, Karakan as black. Then let's see what did Karpo played or some some other strong players, Artemiev, for example, if you want modern player. Um, so what did they play in Karakan? And then you can you can see that and you can maybe try to um, to see some moves there, maybe to um, like uh, to see from them what to play. And early middle game is important because many people are stuck after the opening. They remember opening until move 12, for example, or until move 10 or 15. And they don't know they don't know what to do. What to play, on which side of the board to go, on the queen side or the king side. If you go through many games in that opening, in that variation, you will you will know, you will be sure, 100% sure what to do after the opening in the early middle game. Early middle game is very important because many times in 70% of games, game is basically over after the early middle game. 
So early middle game is very important and please pay attention on that. Don't learn just opening just first 10 or 15 moves or 20. It's not important. You have to learn early middle game as well. How to do that? We already said. Try to go through many Crown Master games on that topic. Uh, so basically we are done with this. So this could be your training program. You see, we we like we we said that you should go through every aspect of the play, openings, middle games, end games. Also, strategy and tactics should be involved. Um, so, if you do like this, and also you have you need to have schedule. You need to have schedule because without the schedule, you will say, okay, I, I don't know, I don't care. I mean, I will do that tomorrow. I will do that. Uh, in two days or something and that's that's bad because you will not be able to uh, to do everything to do everything on time and also i will repeat that for one more time you have to play a lot so try to play as as many games as possible when you when you have time try to find opponent and try to play chess uh okay let's see just uh, a, a few really quickly a few interesting uh positions and then i will explain you uh some things about this okay we have this position on the board it is back black to play and black plays queen c7 now the question for you is what would you play here as white try to think about this okay let's talk about this now together um, so this we can say is late opening or early middle game and that's why I said before that um, you just you you have to to know you have to go through many crown master games if you want to play some opening and you need to learn patterns there you need to learn typical moves there and then later you will able to play them in your own games here, if you play this structure, if you play this pawn formation, this opening, it was, by the way, hedgehog pawn structure for black. So basically, it's it was some sort of Sicilian here, but this position um, can be can be like played um, in many openings. So after queen c7, there is one typical move for white, and after that move, white will gain instant advantage. So here, after queen c7, the best move is knight d5. This is pattern, and if you go through some Grandmaster games, you will definitely uh, see something like this, and then later you will be able to play this move in your games. After knight d5, black takes with the pawn, that's probably the best. And then we will simply take with the c pawn. After taking there, we will take the piece back, and at the same time, we will gain advantage after taking this knight on c6 with our pawn so all of a sudden all our pieces are very active and and we already have a better position this is famous position famous puzzle it is black to move and make a draw please stop the video and try to find solution uh, there are two things about this position you have to know two things. First of all, it's about tactics. You know, you ha you need to have good tactical skills to solve this one. Also, you need to have basic knowledge from bishop endings. Only by using these two things, you can find the right solution. So here, the solution is rook a1 check. White has to play rook f1. Rook takes king takes if we play something with our king or some like random move with the bishop uh, we're going to lose because it is there are actually uh, the same uh, colored bishops on the board and white has two connected passed pawns so it is easy win for white but after king takes f1 we have fantastic move bishop h3 so white takes and now you see that it is wrong colored bishop on the board. He has light squared bishop and this square here, h8 square, promotion square, is dark. 
So white cannot win this. This is the old rule and uh, um, basic rule in chess in bishop endings. Uh, so only if you know this rule and if you have good tactical skills, you can solve this puzzle. Uh, by the way, if white doesn't take, if he goes up with his king, we will we will take the pawn. Bishop takes or king takes, it doesn't matter, and still the same thing. This square is dark and he has light square and bishop. So it's 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 a draw. Uh, yes, so you see we combine here tactical skills and and game knowledge. That happens a lot. So you see why why are you have to be uh, you have to know to know many things in chess to, to have knowledge from uh, all areas here from from tactics from end games strategy early middle games late middle games openings um, different patterns in openings so different different things only if you know everything you will be able to progress in chess and to become strong chess player let's see one more example and we are done what do you think about this position it is white to play and by the way this pawn goes down uh, can white make a draw or it is winning position for black what do you think this is typical i mean it's basic queen ending and uh, queen versus pawn in which white can easily make a draw. Why is that? Because black king is very passive and we will simply use some important rules here. We will play this. Now white is threatening to promote queen there. Queen d8 check. King goes back on g7. Queen goes on g5. King goes on f7. Check again. King goes back maybe. Check. And now king h8. Yes, after king h8, black cannot progress. He cannot activate his king because if he tries to do that, it will be stalemate. If black check us again, again, king g8 and the same threat, promotion on h8, check again, we go back, again we, we threaten the same thing, he can check us again here, 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 we can go here, I mean... The point is that black cannot progress and this position is a draw. So, why I wanted to share this with you? First of all, we were uh, we are not going to work on queen endings later because, uh, by the way, this topic is very important. Just we didn't have enough time for everything. And I find this, this topic, this rule, really, really important because it happens a lot to have something like this uh in the game so remember this rule if you have pawn on on uh a7 c7 f7 and h7 you are white and your king is very close to the pawn and your opponent's king is passive like this too far away then you can simply uh make a draw because your opponent cannot progress as we saw here in this example uh, so this topic i mean uh, in general uh, when we talk about endings uh, that's that's very important there are many many important rules here we are going to work on some i i find uh, some of the most important rules in, in in chess basically so i'm i'm sure completely sure that after this boot camp that you will you will be stronger player than you used to be and um, just when when you finish this later just try to to progress try to play as as much as you can as much as possible uh, try to work on chess also try to create your own training program and you will see you will see results very very soon also try to pay attention on everything on each aspect of play on endings openings middle games uh, tactics strategy different different things try to remember some patterns some typical moves and ideas uh, the easiest way for you to to um, to find them is to uh, try to analyze some grandmaster games you will see many different many many very interesting ideas and you can later use all those ideas in your own games 
so that's it about this. Uh, let's start with um, with the next with the next topic, and I hope that you you have learned something from this, and I hope that you will use some of these tips um, in in your own training program and in in your own play.